Good morning, developers. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process of launching your Node.js app. We're gonna use a Simple Express app as our example, but how to, how to launch that on a server behind another web server. And the fancy term for this is reverse proxy. And that sounds really scary. Let's break it down on the board here. I, I use this for pretty much every Node app that, that I, I deploy, uh, except in the occasional circumstance. Okay, let's say this here, uh, this is supposed to be a laptop and that's going to represent the, the user's browser as well as your local. Why? Well, you have developed your app and I'll put on here EX for Express and it's listing on let's say port 3000. So I'm gonna put right there colon 3000. I'm gonna use 3000 throughout the video. You can, whatever port number you use is, is just fine. But on your browser, you go to localhost colon 3000. You develop, you keep going there, it works great, comes together, and you're ready to show it to people. Whether that's your customers, your mom, your friends, whoever it is, hopefully your, your customers. How do we get this to a place where uh, the world can see it so that it's accessible to the internet? Well, you've got a server set up, okay? We deploy it, so we somehow get your code base over here. So here's your Express app. It's running on your, uh, on your node server, and let's say it's still running here at colon 3000. What can we do? What are our options? Well, I'm gonna give you three. There's of course a couple more than that, but we'll, we'll stick with three. From the, the browser, okay? Say your browser, who's ever. <laughs> Again, we've got a laptop here. We could open up the firewall and send them to colon 3000. So let's say it's um, ms for my site.com colon 3000. There are two problems with this. Well, there's more than that probably, <laughs> but there's at least two. First of all, there's a security issue because we have exposed this port to the internet and it might be okay, but unless you're a ninja and you're probably not if you're watching this video, uh, there are inherent security risks about exposing your, your application directly to, to the internet, opening a port that's not normally open. So that's thing one. Thing two is actually an even bigger deal if that's possible than security. And that's a marketing problem. Nobody's gonna type this in. It looks scary if anybody happens to get linked there. This is not a good option, okay? So what's another option? Another option is we could, uh, we could change this in our code base so that in production, instead of running on port 3000, we have it running up here on port 80 or 443, and you could set that up a couple different ways. You could bind it to 443, which is the HTTPS port, uh, and I'll go ahead and write that next to it in a different color, HTTPS and HTTP. So we got port 80, which is where the browser wants to go so that we just have ms.com, no colon 3000, and then the second one would be the same thing, but it would be HTTPS uh, ms.com. Is this okay? No, this is actually probably significantly worse on the security front. Why? Well, uh, in any pretty much any Linux distro, that at least that I've ever worked with, every port up to 1024, so roughly the first thousand ports, are owned by root. That means that in order to bind your express process to either one of these, you're going to have to give them privileged access. Again, probably pseudo access if you're watching this video. And that means someone is going to come from the internet and they're going to hit one of these two ports. And if, you're, if you have any hole, if, you're, if your app gets compromised in any way, the attacker will have access to the whole server or at least to, to whatever privileges you gave it. And that means your server is toast. So this is a terrible idea. Um, it maybe seems like a good idea, but it is probably the worst uh, between the two, okay? What's another option that we have? Well, another option is this. Instead of having our app listen on these ports, we are going to have a web server. Specifically, we're going to use Apache. Nginx is exactly the same process. It's slightly different uh, the, the way that you write the virtual host, but we can still have the browser come over here, hit port 80 or 443, whatever the case is, but instead of our node app listing there, I'm gonna put an X through there, that's not gonna happen anymore. Actually, let's, <laughs> let's do that, okay? Instead of the Express app being bound to those ports, it's still listening on port 3000. So this is our Express app down here. The, the, the user has come here to port 80 or 443, right? just like every other web app on the internet, and internally, Apache is going to talk with your Express app. 
The request is going to get sent out. All right, we have our rec. It's going to go to Apache. Apache has been battle tested. It's 30 years old. It was made in 1995. Maybe it's older when you're watching this, but Apache's really, really good at handling internet traffic on these two ports. We're leaning on some of the best DevOps and developers that have ever lived and done this, this type of stuff. Apache's going to handle that traffic. It is going to internally talk to port 3000, send the, send the request down there, and then the response is going to get sent back up to Apache, and Apache will send that back the other way. We have a single place that is really easy to set up a certificate. I'm going to put here TLS, which is uh, HTTPS. We have a much, much simpler way to generate certificates because we keep them in one place. Apache will manage that, that traffic so that it's encrypted here. If you want, or if I, I should say, if you need to encrypt the traffic internally for some reason, you can. Typically, that's not necessary, at least for smaller projects. We don't need to worry about that internal traffic. This is the main part that the scary internet is going to want to want to see what that traffic is up to. That will be encrypted and that, and that traffic will, will be managed by Apache. Internally, we can talk back and forth without, without having to worry about that. So you don't have to change your whole code base to use HTTPS. You don't have to generate your own certificates and, and, and stash them somewhere on the server, etc. We can use, uh, I use CertBot uh, and Let's Encrypt, but that TLS process can be managed by Apache and your node server can, can pretty much operate the way that it does on your local. One alternative to this would be Docker. Um, Docker has some advantages and some disadvantages. The reason I bring the TLS thing out is because Docker would be another way to do this kind of thing since he set up a proxy, right, where the internet is talking to Docker. Docker, your container, is talking to your node app. That's exactly what we're doing here. There's a couple advantages there. This is by far the simplest when it comes to setting up HTTPS in my experience. Maybe when you're watching this, Docker's doing a better job. I don't know. Um, before we hop over to the keyboard, a, a couple assumptions. I, if you're going to follow along with me, you need to have a server already set up and you need to have a domain pointed at that server. Um, the reason that, that I'm not covering, uh, I have a Udemy course on that and I will link that if you want to go through the entire process from beginning to end. But the process what we're about to do here is completely different than setting up a server and, and getting a domain pointed at it, that kind of thing. So uh, we're not going to do that in this video. You already need to have a server. You can follow along with me just fine, even if you don't. The other thing that you need to know is that the server I'm going to use is Ubuntu. If you have a different flavor of Linux, that's just fine. But there are potentially some different paths and maybe slightly different commands. And I'll do my best to, to bring that out. But um, Ubuntu is a Debian uh, flavor. It, it, it seems to be the most common, again, in my experience. And it's what I use. So the browser and the local, the code base, all that stuff needs to already be on your server. I'm using Ubuntu. You need to have a domain pointed at that server. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it up so that the request is going to hit port 443, will automatically forward from port 80 to 443. That traffic will be encrypted. It will be sent internally to port 3000 or whatever port your node app is running on. Your node app will respond back to Apache and Apache will send it back out. Let's hop over to the keyboard. I have my terminal window open and I'm using PowerShell, but that should make no difference what terminal client you use or I use because I have already SSH'd in here to my, to my server. So um, if you don't have a server, follow along. I think it will still be really valuable. I had no idea how any of this worked the first several times uh, that I did it. So it, it can be really helpful to just watch. If you are going to do it along with me, you need to be logged in. And, and as I just said on the, on the board, I'm using Ubuntu so that the paths and the commands may be slightly different. Just be aware of that. This particular machine, I just logged in for the first time, hopping over to the browser. I will spend most of our time in the terminal, but just to show you, uh, I'm using AWS for this particular machine, but this is the IP address here, 342015906. And this is the domain that we're going to use, express-apache.goodmorningdevelopers.com. And as you can see, that timed out uh, because nobody is listening there. Hop back over to the terminal and I am going to ping that URL. And sure enough, uh, it hits that IP address and it times out because, <laughs> well, as we said, nobody is listening. And um, I, I didn't hit this on the, the board as hard as I should have, but this is exactly what we want. When the internet traffic comes to our site, we want it to hit Apache. We don't want anybody talking to our node server 
but Apache. So what's going to happen is back over here, the circle has stopped spinning because the browser has given up, but the, the browser is going to talk directly to Apache, not to our node server. Apache is gonna talk internally to our node process. No one will have access to that port. Uh, except internal processes, and then traffic will go back out. This is exactly what we want. So the first thing we need to do is I'm gonna clear the screen out there. Um, I'm gonna try and do a sudo apt install Apache 2. This is the Ubuntu command. So apt is the package manager on Ubuntu, so just be aware. Uh, Apache might might have a different name on yours and, and your installer certainly will be different. Uh, it asks if I want to proceed, and the answer is yes. I get a bunch of errors, though, because this is a brand new computer. Uh, at least on Ubuntu, you have to run sudo apt update. I will meet you back when it's finished. It has finished, so I'll clear the screen out. We'll give that another try. sudo apt install Apache 2. This time, it is able to go through. And as I showed you just a minute ago there on the browser, we didn't have anybody listening uh, over here. Now that this is finished, we can come back over there and refresh, and we get a load. In the exact same URL, we get the Apache 2 default page. What happened? Well, let me clear out the screen. If we go into slash Etsy, Apache 2 sites dash available, and I do LS here. Sites available, there's, there's also a sites enabled. Sites available will show all of the virtual hosts that Apache has, meaning these are the instructions that, that I have to go where to go if somebody shows up looking for a particular domain. And inside of sites available, we will enable particular sites and then those will, those will get listed in sites enabled. But there's only two right now. There's a default for uh, SSL, uh, which is this one, and then there's a default for just standard HTTP. So if I punch in, I'm gonna use VI, you don't need to come to this file if you don't want to. But if we load this up, it shows the document root for every single request to port 80 is slash var www.html. This is loading up because now Apache is going to forward all traffic indiscriminately to whatever happens to be here. So colon Q exclamation point to leave that. If we hop over to var www.html and I ls, there is an index.html. And if I, uh, I'll change this real quick. I'm gonna delete all of these. Uh, oh, hop back over here. I need to sudo that, so we'll sudo that. I'll delete all of these lines and I'll just put in here an H1 that says, hello, uh, reverse proxy students. And we'll close off that H1. I will save it, come back over without having to do anything else. We now, uh, we are now updated. Okay, so this is good, except not really, because <laughs> this isn't what we want at all. We want our node app to be showing up here. So hopping back over, uh, you can put this in any directory that you want. I put most of my web apps in var www. You, you'll have your own way, so whatever is of course fine. I'm gonna make a directory called reverse-proxy, and I did it again. Um, we're gonna need to uh, get sudo access there, and then I'm gonna give ownership of that to Ubuntu so that I don't have that issue anymore. Okay, there we go. So hop into that directory and this is this is on you. You're gonna need to create your own or rather get your code base on here however you need to. I'm just going to vi a, a file here. We're gonna do vi server.js and I am just gonna paste in there the simplest express server that I could think to make that we could test. We've got express required on line one. We've made an app on line two. We're listening on port 3000 and I, I just threw a log in there so we could confirm it was running. And then we're listening on slash for our good friend, hello world, okay? <laughs> this is not an impressive app by any stretch, but I'm gonna save and exit. So we have server.js uh, in our directory. Now we just need to run node on it. Well, if I type node, it doesn't exist, um, so we've got to install that. And, and I don't use the, the Ubuntu managed one. Back over to the browser here, node source, uh, this is the, the GitHub uh, page or, or, or repo for it. I don't know if it makes any difference anymore. It did at one point. Um, the Ubuntu version here is what I am gonna grab. Uh, it's down below and they have node 22, so I will grab, first of all, this command right here. Make note that if you need curl, you'll, you'll have to install it there, but I don't need curl. So coming back over, I am going to run curl. It has succeeded. I'm gonna grab this next one where we're going to run that startup shell, paste that in. Should take almost no time. Back over here, gonna grab this line, 
which if we scroll back up, it is exactly the same line as right here. At least I think it is. Uh, we just have a dash Y in there and they've got app dot get app dash get, which is the old version. Um, in any case, it will still work, but we, we definitely have the right version or maybe we can control the version that we want a little bit better, but this will get us Node.js and NPM. So I'm going to clear out the screen and we'll give it another try. I'm going to run node on server.js and we got a much friendlier error. This one uh, at least is not DevOps related. Um, it doesn't have express. So this is the part where you should have no trouble. Hopefully I'm going to run npm init dash y to get our, our package.json to do npm install express. And there we go. I'm going to run a node on server.js again, and we get no errors. Listening on port 3000. If we come back over here and refresh, well, <laughs> nothing changes because port 3000 is not accessible. And even if it were, we're going to port 80. If I come over here and punch in port 3000, nothing's going to happen. You can't see uh, the wheel, but it is spinning because this is hidden behind the firewall. That is exactly what we want. We don't want anyone going directly to port 3000. Well, we are going to go back over to slash Etsy slash Apache 2 slash sites dash available. Again, this is the Ubuntu path. It's going to be different if you're on a different flavor of Linux because Apache has different places where it will put itself. And we are going to create a new file. And I use VI, use Nano or Emacs or whatever your thing is. I use VI. Uh, but we want to call this. You, you can call it actually anything that you want. But it's usually good practice to name it after the site that you're doing. So for me, yours will be different, whatever your URL is, but it'll be express dot, uh, or express dash apache dot good morning developers dot com. We have to end it with dot conf for configuration. So that will open up a blank file in VI. I hit I to go into insert mode and I am going to paste in uh, a virtual host file that I have used forever. <laughs> uh, the only things uh, that you really need to change, um, well, I'll show you. Uh, wrapping around the whole thing, we have this virtual host. It, it looks like an HTML tag or XML, and that's exactly what it is. Virtual host, I want you, Apache, to listen for any tra any network traffic of any kind, any IP address, any domain, right? That's what the wildcard is, that comes in on port 80. If that happens, then at least check to see is the server that they're looking for this domain? If the answer is yes, then I've got a location tag. Technically, you don't need this, but I always put it in there. Uh, you can change the relative path or whatever if you need to, but we're gonna use proxy preserve host. This is gonna give us an error because we haven't enabled this yet, but, um, but make sure that this is on, and then the traffic that you get coming in on port 80 for this URL, you are listening, Apache, you're listening, you, you forward internally to this address and I've got 127.0.0.1, that is localhost. It's the same thing as localhost, it's just the, the loopback, colon 3000. This is what you can put on your local and it's the same thing that you've been doing. Our, our node server is gonna be listening here and Apache is getting the traffic from the scary internet, port 80, this URL, we are going to turn around and internally talk to the server and the reverse, meaning that the traffic coming back, this is the request going in, this is the response coming back out from that same place, is gonna go back out to whoever was looking for this. This is exactly what we want. We want Apache is the only process that should be talking to our node server. Apache is trustworthy, the scary internet is not. Uh, I'm gonna hit escape. To get out of insert mode, hold shift down and hit Z twice to save and exit. And we are back here. We have to enable the site. So we're going to do sudo a2 n site. And then we're going to throw in there the file we just made. So this configuration file, again, this is Ubuntu. Uh, this is how it works on Ubuntu. It might not work like that for you. So please check that. We run it and it wants us to run this command. We have to restart Apache because we just made a configuration change. So I sudo it, paste that in there, and we get an error. So if I copy this and run sudo and paste that in, it will tell us what the problem it has, and it says invalid command proxy pre uh, preserve host. <laughs> like we just said, uh, it said perhaps it's misspelled. We can't see the whole error there. Um, it's not misspelled. We we have not actually enabled that. So I am going to kill the server uh, or this this process here with Control C. Let's clear out the screen. 
and let's enable it. We'll do sudo a2 n mod proxy. So this is the Ubuntu Apache or the Apache version of Ubuntu command to enable uh, the proxy module. It's already part, it already ships with Apache 2. It has forever. I can't imagine you won't have it um, for any reason. So I'm, I'm not going to go over it. But the proxy module needs to be enabled. We get the note that the, the proxy module has been enabled and we have to run this command again because Again, we made configuration changes. So restart the server and we didn't get an error this time. So it's exciting to try this out. We're going to CD back over to var dub dub dub. And then uh, my, I don't remember what I called it, uh, reverse proxy. There we go. I'm going to run node against server.js. So this is where I, I created my server. You need to go wherever you, you brought your code base in and you can run node against server.js. Listing on port 3000, that's where we were before. Come back over to the browser, get rid of the th colon 3000, which we don't want, and try this, and we get an internal server error. Well, I set us up for this one, and I am sorry for that, but we're gonna kill the server. We have to enable another module. Uh, what the, the error uh, that we're getting is because we have to also do an A2 nmod proxy HTTP. It isn't enough to just have the proxy module enabled. We have to also enable the proxy HTTP so that it knows how to handle HTTP traffic as a proxy. So a little bit of a side note there. Um, if you enable this, it will automatically enable everything up the tree. So normally I would just do this one. And as you can see here, uh, it, it, the proxy module is already enabled because that's a dependency. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, again, probably a silly thing to set us up there, but now we have to run, uh, restart uh, again, so run that command one more time, and then let's run our node uh, server.js. Let's hop back over and refresh, and there we are. We get hello world at our URL. Really, ex really exciting. Um, at this point now, uh, you would use PM2, at least that's what I would use to run the process in the background. Before we do that, uh, I'll briefly show you, uh, we have to do that because I sold that as one of the values. We are running on port 80 and that's not good. We wanna be running this on HTTPS. There's no reason for it to be on port 80 because uh, certificates are basically free now and phones usually won't load stuff on insecure, uh, insecure sites. So we can get HTTPS a really, really easy way with CertBot, it will handle the whole process for us right here and this hopefully will still be there because it's been here as long as i can remember my http website is running apache on and then pick your uh, flavor here i'm running on ubuntu uh, they don't have 22 for some reason so i'll just grab 20. we scroll down and here we go install certbot so i'm going to copy this command here come over and paste it in and if you get an error about snap you'll you'll need to install snap they have it uh, back up there it should ship with ubuntu but let that finish Come back over and run this command. Uh, this is just creates a sim link. I'm not sure what that C is at the end. Let's just make sure. Okay, <laughs> I don't know what happened. But this is going to create a sim link to that binary. And then we are going to run this command here, sudo certbot dash dash Apache. So coming back over, here's where the magic happens. And I this is so awesome how simple this is. The first time we, we run, it's going to ask us what email address you want to put in here. You can cancel it, but you do have to have something in there. And then you'll have to accept the terms, yes or no, you can't move forward without accepting them. It will ask if you wanna support EFF, that's entirely up to you, do you want emails or not? And finally, we reach uh, this place, which again, this is where the magic is, which names do you wanna activate HTTPS for? Well, we're using the Apache version, so it knew where to look. And I only have one site on here, uh, and it gives it to us. I'm gonna hit one, because that's the one that I am going to use, uh, hit enter, and it is going to go out to Let's Encrypt and get a certificate, put it where it needs to go, update our virtual host, and restart Apache. Not to mention, it's going to redirect all traffic on port 80 uh, to port 443. So you can see everything just happened. Congratulations, you hopefully you get this. Uh, successfully enabled HTTPS on this site. So if I come back over here, it says it's not secure. If I just hit Enter, it automatically forwards us to the HTTPS connection. The server's down because I killed it. I'm not using PM2 here. I'll run node on server.js. We'll come back over, refresh again. 
There we go. We have a secure connection. You can click on that and, and go through and look at the certificate. I'll try to go to HTTP here and it will automatically forward me, uh, which is a really good thing. Let's try putting in colon 80 at the end. Uh, it won't even let me do that. So this is a really good thing. Why is it doing that? Well, let me kill the server one more time and show you quickly back to Apache 2 sites dash available. We'll hop in there and take a quick look at our V host. And I was too quick on the draw there. Uh, if I LS, we've got two configuration files. Now we have the one that we made. Let's encrypt or I guess certbot just made this new file, same name, but it has dash LE for let's encrypt dash SSL because this is where our certificate uh, is at. So I'm going to look at the one that we made here. So let's sudo vi that thing. We've got three new lines at the bottom. The rewrite engine is on. Okay, that's the thing that is going to tell the server that, hey, someone showed up on port 80, but we are going to send them on to the HTTPS version of this. And this is permanent rewrite. So before anything happens, Apache gets the traffic notices, hey, this person's on port 80, they shouldn't be here, they should be at the HTTPS. So we go back and look at that other file, and then we are done. This is pretty much the same thing. You have to have the SSL module enabled, a virtual host that's listening on 443 instead of 80, which is correct. This part's all the same. This is where the SSL certificates have been uh, included, and that is magic. So I'm going to close out of this. That right there is the whole process. Run back over to our server quick and run node on server.js. It is going to serve up your express site or your node.js app on this domain securely. And even though there's a lot of moving parts, if you're new, it's really only a couple and there's really only a few things that can go wrong. They can take a long time to troubleshoot. That is definitely true, but this is an awesome way to launch your, your Node.js apps. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you have any issues and I will see you next time.